20 years ago, there was a pretty female artist who was in cancer remission, but she knew it was probably just a matter of time until her cancer returned. In order to cope with such a horrifying outcome, she created a beautiful mural by the sea. However, such an art project was not to just create such an exquisite and heavenly visual, but right after completing it, destroy it. It wasn't completely destroyed, for some it was captured on video, allowing someone like me to view it like you are seeing of some of the old, these old pictures of me as in this uh, dusty old picture book I used to hide under my parents' house to try to protect it from fire. And trying to protect it from fire, it, uh, the end of it got destroyed by black mold when it was exposed to a secret water leak under the house. Anyway, as I watched her story unfold, where she would then destroy such a beautiful painting she put so much time into, I just couldn't help but feel sad. For the art piece was not just about a pretty, pretty mural being destroyed, but about the intransigence of life. And no matter how miraculous your body is, no matter how wondrous your brain, your creativity, your personality, and individual spirit, no matter how miraculous the life of those you love around you are, that all comes to an end, as if they and you never were. To destroy such a creation was her way of taking some kind of control of over something she had no control over, the end of her brief life as a thinking, feeling, and caring individual. Of course, at the time, I just didn't quite understand what she was getting at. Well, a couple of years later, such an understanding of why she did what she did began to make some sense. You see, my parents had to move out of their house in the forest, a house they lived in for nearly 30 years. It was pretty much a house I came of age in. When I went up to help them, I became shocked and saddened when I noticed that most of my writings, my videotapes, my pictures of myself, and novels I had written in pencil by hand, written over the years to try to make sense of a lonely life, were all lined up to go into the trash with other things my parents believed to hold no significance. It took me back to the time we moved from an apartment. They threw away my battery-powered toy robot I loved when I was five. Now, seeing my books, pictures, videotapes, and other creations headed for a landfill was a huge wake-up call to me that I should not get attached to things, for eventually, they too will be gone. This was actually not exactly the first wake-up call to this fact, for ten years earlier, a forest fire was starting to burn down this same house, and the only thing my parents grabbed were a Bible and the Young's analytical concordance to the Bible. Everything else they left to God and have fire destroy. And such things that left behind were, again, my writings and pictures, for I didn't have video tapes then. They would have been destroyed, were not for a shift in the wind. It, like this time, was a reminder to me that when I die, all that I have created and recorded, all those things I placed so much value on, are going to be lined with coffee grounds, banana pills, and maggots. That they will be... they will go into oblivion like so much flotsam and garbage. No matter how much time I put into creating them, such a feeling of dread haunted me since I was a boy and increased when I discovered my grand discovered that my grandmother threw out old letters of her husband who died before I was born. They were letters she loved and cherished since she was young, and here she was, now throwing them away when I wasn't looking. Later, I discovered that she not only threw out old letters of her husband, my grandfather, but audio reels of my grandfather audio reels I was really looking forward to playing if I should ever find an old recorder that played reel-to-reel -reel audio tape. Not only had she thrown them out, 
but she had thrown away pictures of her old boyfriend when he, was, when he went to Egypt, tossing out a picture of him when he was standing by the Sphinx, when it was still buried under the sand. Grandma also tossed out old high school yearbooks of her as well. She, she was very attractive in those high school yearbooks, and she just tossed them out like they were old magazines and newspapers. Well, believe it or not, but I was angry at her. I think I even let loose some cuss words because the audio reels were more than just my grandfather or uh, uh, grandfather of him or wh whom I really wanted to hear, but they contained the voices of my parents when they were recently married. They contained the voice of me as a boy when I was just learning how to read, and now I'd never be able to hear such things again. When I asked her why she threw them out, she said they were only valuable to her, and that when she died, she thought they would be thrown away anyway. I was still stunned and a bit I, I was still stunned and a bit sad. In my anger, I told Grandma that her throwing away those reel-to-reel uh, -reel audio tapes was as if she had killed off the rest of my grandfather. Well, more of them, that is. Anyway, my grandma eventually died. Do you think I threw away her old diaries like she thought I would? No. But I see the day coming that, like my videos, books, and these pictures you see before you, that they too will end up in the trash like they were headed for in the move of my family. Like when my toy robot was tossed into the trash. For they only are valuable to me. No one looks through my grandmother's diaries, and come to think of it, Neither do I. And since it's inevi inevitable that they will end up in a landfill, I thought I'd join my grandmother and that artist in not getting attached to the temporal by tossing out this old album of my past. Pictures, for one thing, are a blessing and a curse. Yesterday, my old girl girlfriend sent me a picture through email of the two of us together. She was on my lap, smiling while I was enjoying looking at her incredible female young beauty. Uh, I was really happy to see such a picture, for it was one I had never seen before. It was taken by her photographer friend, capturing the both of us together when I was not 19. And, well, all I can say is she was never more attractive. But on seeing such a picture... I, I couldn't help but feel a little sad as well because, well, I'll never look like that again. At least not in this life. And neither will she. Neither will she. We looked so much better then. It was a reminder, again, of the intransigence of life. And so, to take some control, I will try to throw off the cares of this brief life to remove at least some of the idols from my life and do this. Oh. <sighs>